Welcome to a victorious Believe in Saints podcast. Uh, Terrence Copper and myself, David Grubb, welcome you uh, as the Saints pull off the improbable, the impossible 27 to 26 victory over the Atlanta Falcons in week one. TC, man, we went into this one and I thought the Saints would win 27 20. You said it was going to be tight that this, you know, that this game was going to be a, a one possession game. And that's what it was. It came down to the final uh, play of the game, that block kick. Rivalries, the Falcons, everything. It just, it was one of those games, man. <laughs> it was one of those games where you just, you don't know who's going to win it. I mean, of course we wanted the Saints to win, but as that game was going on, I'm like, wait a minute. The Falcons look a lot better than what I thought it was going to look like. And we looked a lot worse than I thought it was going to look like when we first started, to be honest. Uh, so, But it was a great game. Let's touch on some of the things that we actually talked about before the game last week and see um, your thoughts on that. we got to start with the offensive line. That's the thing that people are, are looking at very closely today. Um, the first half, they struggled. They struggled. Um, they, they couldn't uh, give Jameis a lot of time to throw. I think he was also – his timing was a little bit off, you could tell. But they came together and were able to provide enough protection in that fourth quarter – in particular, allowed them to get down the field with throws. Um, did they improve as the game got along to you, or do you think that there was a combination of things that helped them? What did you, what did you think about the offensive line play there? So when I think of the offensive line, I can't just talk about the offensive line. I got to talk about the running backs with Kamari and, Ing and Ingram. They gave up two sacks themselves uh, just on pass protection. They was picking up the wrong guy, and by the time they got to the guy that was picked up, James is getting sacked or getting pressure on him. So a lot of our issues last night, I'm not saying all of it, but some of our issues were not just my offensive linemen. It was our running backs not picking up the blitz. Uh, so that's what gave up two sacks. I know we gave up four total, but two of them I know for sure was not on the offensive line. It was on our running backs not picking them up. But they stayed calm and they just got better as we went on. Uh, Playmaking started making plays as we went on, uh, especially after that first half. Uh, so, you know, as, as the game went on, the playmakers made the plays. Um, that's nowhere more evident as we talk about Jameis Winston and, those, and that wide receiving core. Um, everybody came up big. All the receivers came up big. Jawan Johnson, who we talked about um, last week as well with his relationship with Jameis, got a couple of big plays um, mm -hmm. in, the, in the second half. This receiving core is deep. And as they got their timing together – Everybody was able to create some separation. You saw mm -hmm. the, the speed that Chris Olave brings to the table. You saw Jarvis Landry doing his stuff after the catches, the things that we saw. Yep. And then you saw the physicality with Mike Thomas and his ability to shield off defenders and make tough catches. Everything that we wanted to see out of those receivers, we saw in the second half. Uh, we definitely did. And I think also after that first half, uh, Pete opened up the playbook a little bit more because I've seen some plays, especially to Thomas, uh, out of a trip set. And he was the third receiver. He kind of ran a wheel route, you know, at and uh, what you call it, him in the back with the back, uh, a back shoulder in the end zone. So those type of things, man, you see the offense starting to open up a little bit. It gave Pete a chance to see what the defense was doing the first half. And then the second half, he started opening it up a little bit. I love the way they're using Thomas, though. They're using him a lot, a lot like how Sean Payton used Marcus Colston. Uh, when Marcus Colston played, they moved him out. Who's the outside receiver. He's the slot receiver. He's the third receiver or it's tight end technically. You know, so they moved him all over the place. You know, he was able to make plays. Um, what did you think of Chris? I mean, we talked about Chris Olave, you know, not being listed on the top three in the depth chart. And you said he was going to make – he was going to have the opportunity to make plays in the second half. And in that two-point conversion in particular, that was a play drawn up specifically for him going back to his Ohio State days that they pulled and said he's comfortable with this. Let's run this for him. Uh, that mm -hmm. shows a lot of confidence in the young man to say, this is your play in a critical situation. Oh, yeah, that just lets you know they trust him. Uh, and even with, I mean, I know he didn't get a lot of balls uh, thrown to him, but, you know, that shows you that they trust him. It's just this night wasn't his night, you know, to, to be one of those, those players that have a, a ton of uh, yards or a ton of balls thrown to him. But when the play is called for him, he's making plays. And that's all you can expect right now from a young guy, especially with a receiving core so deep. Uh, but I'm sure he's going to get his opportunity. He's going to get way more opportunities as the season go on. When you when you get Jameis in that fourth quarter, 
you know, he had three incompletions, two of them were on attempted spikes. So if we take those out of it, he had a perfect passer rating. He mm-hmm. did it quickly because they needed those drives to be quick. So he didn't waste a lot of time. Um, mm-hmm. He made good decisions. He was able to go downfield. He made reads. All the criticisms that people had had of Jameis coming into the season. He looked like the guy that you could give the ball to in the fourth quarter and say, go make plays. And and he did all the things that you want to see out of a mature NFL quarterback. You know what I liked about Winston? I liked the fact that when he was getting a ton of pressure on him, especially in that first half, he didn't do what Tampa Bay Winston would have done, throwing it up in a bad situation and got a pick. He threw no picks, even though he was he was pressured a lot early. You know, and it wasn't the perfect game early in that first half, but he still kept control of the ball. He didn't turn it over. He didn't just throw it up, just kind of get it out of there, uh, trying to make a play and end up a bad situation. You know, so just by him understanding, you know, take the sack or throw it away, you know, or or run for it instead of just making the bad throws and the bad reads and, and forcing turnovers, that shows maturity for me when he goes through when he's going through adversity. Not necessarily when he's just killing it the entire time. What is he doing when, when it's adversity? Is he's going back to the old Winston? Is he just throwing it up, or is he making better decisions? Even his inaccurate throws in the first half, they weren't bad balls. You know what I right. mean? Like the the ones that right. he threw, you could see that he was trying to avoid trouble for Mike on a couple of throws where he said, "I'm mm-hmm. putting a little behind, rather than lead him into the hit. I'm gonna just. Yep. I know this pass is probably gonna be incomplete. I'm not gonna set my man up to get hurt." And it just it seemed like he made some good business decisions at times where it's just like the punt is the best we're going to get out of this. And let's just take mm-hmm. the punt. That's it. That's it. Punts are not always bad. It lets you know you didn't turn it over. Yes. And you give your defense a shot to go out there and get a stop. So punts are not always bad. And the fact that we could punt it and not give up turnovers, I think also helped us win that game. You have to give the defense credit for in the second half, how they rebounded first half, um, you know, it didn't look good. There were times in the second half where they clearly could not stop Cadero Patterson, who just was a truck running through the defense at times. But they made an adjustment in that fourth quarter, and, and the guys in the back end, too, Marcus May and Honey Badger come up, force a, a big fumble. Um, mm-hmm. the, and the D-line did enough on third down to get off the field a couple of times when they really needed to. Yeah, they did. Uh but I was still, even though I'm glad we got the win, and there's no such thing as a as an ugly win. A win is a win. So we'll take it however it comes. But I was disappointed in our defense early, you know, because I feel like we was getting out physical. But you gotta take your hat off to Mariota. Like I gotta I gotta take my hat off to him because he played a good game. He didn't play a bad game. He he managed the ball, he he ran it when he needed to run it. He put his receivers in good positions, you know, so I would, I did not expect that Mariota to come out and play against us. Uh, their offensive coordinator, the Falcons offensive coordinator put, called a great game against us, a great game, you know, so you got to take your hats off to the Falcons. It wasn't all because like I said, the saints played bad, which we could have played better, but the Falcons came out and played some good football. I think that was the thing that was surprising was just how physical the Falcons were from the beginning on both sides of the football and that the Saints were getting out physical at the point of attack on the Mm -hmm. offensive line and the defensive line from jump. Those were, that was probably the biggest surprise to me. Mm -hmm. That was me as well. I was, I didn't know what I was looking at. Honestly, I was like, what, what are we doing fellas? But like I said, we we finally, we got it together. We had some turnovers as well. We got some turnovers, um, but we came together as a, as a unit and pulled it out because you don't come back on teams like that especially when the team is being that much more physical than you are. And they up by 16 at one point, you know, usually teams that's not good teams, they're not going to come back. They're going to lay down. They're being out physical. Uh, They're up by 16. You know, those type of bad teams would have laid down for the Falcons. That just lets you know that we are a good team. We got to correct some things, but we are a good team. Yeah. The confidence is certainly there. Um, Mm -hmm. and, And I think you look at the teams in the NFC South and you go around the division real quick, and you saw yesterday you saw uh, the Panthers be the Panthers. Some good, some bad. They sh- a mm-hmm. game that they probably should have won against Cleveland, and they didn't win. Um, and then you, you, you look at uh, Tampa, 
and what they did against Dallas. And you you come away and you're like 19 to nine. Are you were were you tremendously impressed? I think Jameis and Mariota had the best two quarterback performances out of the four quarterbacks that performed in the division. And I think defensively, mm-hmm. you saw that that this division is is there for the Saints to take. When you look at the other offenses in this, you I think you know what what's going to be much better than what you saw yesterday. Effectively, is anybody going to be more physical than what the Falcons were against the Saints yesterday? I don't think so. Uh, you might get you have more talent on the outside in Tampa than what you have in Atlanta. You have a better quarterback, obviously, in Tom Brady, but they struggled offensively, and I think they're going to struggle at times. So I think the Saints still come away looking and feeling pretty good after Week One. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, especially having a division win early in the season like this. Uh, and like the division is wide for the, for the Saints to take it, but the Falcons are a prime example. We really got to go take it. These mm-hmm. teams aren't going to lay down for us just because we're the Saints and we have this roster, this roster full of depth and some, some stars up there. These teams aren't going to lay down because even though I felt like the score was going to be close against the Falcons, I didn't, ex- I didn't expect the Falcons to take it to us the way they did. I didn't expect that. So that just lets me know that you know what we can't be too we can't be overly excited about that win because we got a lot of work to do, but just enjoy the victory. But understand that we got to take it to these teams. They're not going to lay down for us because Atlanta was a good team. It's a good thing that they don't see a lot of teams that run that kind of offense because the Saints have struggled. That's the one type of offense that they have struggled with over the Dennis Allen era is the a, a mobile quarterback. Mm-hmm. who could get outside and then to have that running back with them who could give you that that real threat. And that's what you could not leave Cordero Patterson alone. So you saw the line at times. The Saints had to bring in a third linebacker, which was unusual for them um, to mm-hmm. do it at different points. They they had to count. So there was a lot of soft, it felt like, attacks from the middle and the safeties where they just weren't sure if they wanted to come and put pressure on Mariota. And there were some zones, some holes that were left in zones for receivers to sit down in and make some catches in the first half. It was just, uh, I think, this. What, but once they adjusted, I mean, the Saints did mm-hmm. a really nice job of not allowing the Falcons to, to extend any drives in the second half. True. That was big. Those adjustments, uh, second half adjustment, that's what it's going to come down to. Uh, even when it comes to any team in the NFL, you got the best coaches in the, in the NFL coaching because they got to be able to make adjustment into in-game adjustments. When the game first started, uh, the Falcons' first 15 plays, it's already drawn up before they even before the game even started. So you're going to have 10 to 15 plays that these are the plays we're going to run. And so when they came out like they did and they was executing, I was like, okay, we just got to withstand the storm. And then when it's time to make those adjustments after halftime, we're going to see how good our coaching staff is. And it showed those adjustments was made. And our defense stepped up. We started holding them. Our offense started moving the ball. Our playmakers started making plays. Uh, we opened the playbook up a little bit more. And there you have it. We win. How big was you think in the secondary not having Pulse and Adebo, um available and having to rely on, on Roby a little bit more? I think Pulse and Adebo, we, we, have, we know the expectation for him is so high this season. Um you know, I think you know that not having him was certainly a, a loss. Oh, definitely a loss. Uh, you definitely need a guy like this, somebody talented like that, uh, for him not to be playing. Uh, that's a big loss. That's that's an extra guy that you don't have back there. And like I said, the Falcons came out. They played, and I hate talking about the Falcons like this, but I was just so surprised. I was surprised. You know how well they came out playing, and it shocked me. You know, it shocked me. But we definitely missed him. Um, but I think overall, we we made plays defensively and offensively when we needed them the most. Pete Werner, man, um, I don't even know if we could categorize just how valuable he was. I think he had 12 tackles, 11 of them were solo tackles. He was on special teams. That dude was was balling um, yesterday and, and just – he was so valuable, especially in stopping Cordell Patterson in some critical moments when the Falcons mm-hmm. went to him looking for some first downs and P. Werner was the first one in there with a helmet on on a, on, on a man. I just I just thought he played a phenomenal game. Oh, yeah, he did. He did, definitely. Uh, he definitely showed up. He definitely showed up when we needed him to. Um, like I said, we had a few guys, man, that, that started stepping up and showing up when we needed them to. So, you know, it's just a real overall team collective effort uh, even down to special teams, 
you know, field goals. We needed them. Then down the special team, blocking field goals, you know, blocking field goal at the end. All these things are special teams things. So as a as a unit, as as your three units, offense, defense, special teams, every one of those position groups, no, they wasn't perfect, but it was time to step up for them to make a play. That unit stepped up. It was so big. You know, Will Lutz, like we talked about last season, the Saints lost a number of games because of kicking. Mm -hmm. You trust Will Lutz to go out there and boot a 51-yarder. You trust him to do it. Even after he put one off the uprights in the first half, the guy yep. was just, you know, when it was pressure, he made 40-plus yard kicks in mm -hmm. clutch situations. And, and just having that, having him on the field, is a factor. That's winning teams have winning players, like you said, in all those positions. And Will Lutz being back was just as important as Jameis Winston being big. <laughs> right, right. We like to in, in the NFL, it's so hard to win. It's so hard to win games in the NFL. So you need everybody to be out there making plays. No matter what unit you're on, whether it's kickoff, whether it's kick return, punt team, offense, defense, everybody has to be on one accord and have to make plays when their numbers call. And and that's what happened. What's funny is, is, you know, you talked last week, you said rivalries, you know, once the game starts, it ain't about rivalry, we're executing. And then, but when it's over, you see the Mario <laughs> Davis walking up to the uh, podium holding that rise up flag. You see how, the, you know, Saints fans reacted, how players reacted. Then it kicks back in that we were in Atlanta, that we would mm -hmm. beat the Falcons. This is a division rival, but it's the rival. And again, they tied the all-time series. The Falcons were up on that one. The Saints have won 23 out of the last 33 against this team. So the Saints have walked down the Falcons in the, in the all-time series just the way they walked them down in that game yesterday. Yeah, and you know what? That type of game and beating Atlanta in Atlanta, the way we beat them, that right there can propel you for the rest of the season. Understanding, like, listen, okay, listen, we have a team here that understands how to fight back versus adversity different types of adversity, not just adversity of the score, but getting outplayed, that type of adversity, being out physical, for you to turn that thing around, usually once you're getting out physical, you're getting out physical for the rest of the game. Usually you can't turn that around. Usually if they just more physical than you, just more physical. But for us to turn that part around as well and then change the score around, you know, so those type of wins coming back like that usually propel teams off into the – and I can say to the sunset, but also usually have them having good seasons because now they know what they have within their selves. So it don't matter what the adversity looks like anymore. We know if we stick together and we do the things we're supposed to be doing, we can always come back. So the Saints never going to feel like they're out of the game now just because of how they played this game against a division opponent the first game of the season. So they only can continue to get better. And I think the way that they came back, is is important too because it wasn't like the Falcons had a whole bunch of turnovers and you you got a lot of weird plays. No, it was okay. We have to put some drives together, so they put drives together. Yep. We have to make stops. They made stops. We have to make kicks. They made kicks. So it wasn't a fluky, you know, comeback. It was a legitimate game planned, executed, mm -hmm. um, you know, comeback. Which I think, like you said, that builds it up too because now you also trust in the system. What we mm -hmm. called worked. What we right. did as a unit worked. It wasn't stuff that you could just say we relied on our athleticism. We got some breaks. No, we stuck with what we came here to do, and we did that for four quarters. Yes, uh, like I said, they just they follow the game plan. They they trust the process. They follow the game plan, and and it worked out. So, and then now you get better from week one to week two. That's that's when you get the most out of uh, out of things that you're learning from the first game. That's that's when you get the most the best you get you get better the most between the first and the second game of the season. So now I'm ready to see how much improvement are we going to make going into this next game, which is another division opponent. So we got to be ready for that one as well. And you get legit tape, like you said. Now you got legit tape on yourself yep. and every team around the league. You've seen them all execute once, and I think that it was big for the Saints in a way that you saw yesterday. A lot of teams, their games came down to the last minute. Um, you had, you had tie ball games, you had games that went into overtime. Saints didn't have none of that. I think it's, I think right. those are, you know, those psychologically are big too because you completed the mission. It, I think it's a big difference for if they had lost 29-27 and you say, well, they came back though. Does it mean as much 
if you don't get the win. And I think that the win, securing that was so important, not just the comeback, but getting the W out of it, that the effort mattered. You know, it's not enough to come back and be close because you would have felt, I think the team would have felt about the missed opportunities in the first half if they lose 29-27. But to come back mm-hmm. and win the way they did, to close it all out, I think it's just, a, like you said, it's a much different boost. Yeah, and you're hitting it right on the head because there is no such thing as more victories in the, in the NFL. It's all about did you win or did you lose? And the same way I said there's no such thing as more victories, there's no such thing as, as bad wins or ugly wins. It is we either won or we lost. You know, so we're we going to go back to the drawing board. We're going to look at the film and we're going to get better. But at least we got the W because that's all that shows on that win column. One, one and oh. You know, it don't show that we struggled. It don't show that. It's all about wins and losses. Dennis Allen, I, I think, you know, he said, I hope they all aren't like this. No, they ain't going to all be like this. <laughs> but I think the first three weeks of the season, this could very much be, you know, like these are all three division games, teams that know you, know know your style of play. Um, and I think, you know, certainly these next two weeks will be tough, close games as well. But his voice and his credibility – have to be strong after you know again he he looked the part you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying it, he never looked like he was losing his mind i don't you never saw him get into players or anything like that nope. he he stayed the course and he looked the part it, and that's all you could ask for i think out of your coach in week one that's all you asked for and i understand that he was he was joking about uh i hope they all aren't like this but guess what it could be and we got to be willing to do exactly what we did this game Every week, if if need be, you know, so they could be like this. You just don't know. The NFL is tricky, man. But so you got to be willing to do play the exact same way if it comes down to that to get a victory. You know, whatever it was, whatever it was we had to do, we got to be willing to do that every week, even though it was hard. Every week, you got to be willing to do it. Not saying you're going to have to, but you got to be willing to do it. You know, we'll get into the Tampa matchup later this week and get really deep into that. But your first blush, just looking at the at Tampa last night, watching them against Dallas, um, what did you think? Besides the fact that I thought that they ran the football really, really well, um, I didn't see a lot out of them offensively. What did you think out of, of Tampa Bay? Uh, I think Tampa Bay is still trying to figure this stuff out. Um, I don't think they was clicking on all cylinders. I think they ran the ball well, like you said, but. I also don't think that Dallas team is a good team. And I'm not trying to throw them under the bus early. I know it was the first season, for the first game for them as well. But Dallas didn't look good to me. They didn't look good. Um, but I think Tampa Bay, because they are Tampa with with uh, Shrugs, the best quarterback to ever do it at the helm. So they're going to be Tampa. They're going to be always going to be contenders. But I didn't see – I didn't see where they scare you at. Yeah, I – you know, yeah, I'm not going to write them off. This, like you said, this NFL, nothing comes cheap. Um, but uh, they just didn't look like. Again, I think that they've regressed from last year. I think that they have. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think the the Saints will. I think the Saints should win this game. If you ask me today, I'm saying the Saints are healthy as they are today, and nothing goes wrong this week during practice. I would say the Saints have to be favored to win that game on Sunday. I agree with you. I can't even uh, disagree with that. I agree. Uh, like I said, the Falcons, not the Falcons, but the the Bucs just didn't show me anything. I mean, they, they got the win, which that was big, beating the Cowboys. But they, they still didn't show me anything, you know. We'll it, wasn't like, it wasn't like how I felt when I watched the Bills game, mm-hmm. the Buffalo game. When I watched Buffalo play, who did they play the first game of the season? What was it, Thursday night? Who did Buffalo right. play? Um, the Rams. The Rams. I don't get that feeling. See, I feel like Buffalo is tough. I watched that game. and But I don't get that same feeling when I'm thinking about the Bucks. Uh, the yeah, Buffalo man, gave you that sense of of that they were willing again, willing to do it. You know yes. that that Josh Allen was out there willing to do what it took to win that game. Um, and they were mm-hmm. willing to 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 push as hard as they could against the champs and said, you know, you get up against us, you playing right. us, we're not playing you. And that's right. not the way to, that their attitude was. And I think that's I think that's the attitude the Saints carry. I think they mm-hmm. firmly believe that whenever they go somewhere, that that team has to deal with them. Uh, right. And I think that they certainly they should feel confident against the Bucks, considering every time they've seen Tom Brady outside of that one playoff game, they've beaten him mm-hmm. and they've beaten him 
well. It's not like that they've yes. gotten the shootouts with Tampa. They have beaten up on the Bucks offense. I think uh, I think Coach Allen really has uh, Tom Brady's number. I don't know what he does that really gets to Brady and gets to that uh, that offense they have, but it's something that he knows about Brady that he ain't letting the cat out the bag yet. But he, I think he got his number. You know, everybody had their nemesis, and I think that Allen is Tom Brady's nemesis when it comes to coordinators. Lastly, um, if you had to pick an offensive MVP for yesterday and a defensive MVP. Who would you give those to? Oh, man. I got to go Winston. Offensively. Defensively. I don't know. I don't it's know. hard. It's, it's hard because I want to give it to Pete. I want to give it to May. I want to give it to – I mean, yeah. like, <laughs> some cats have big games. They'll make some big, some big plays for us, you know, so I – I don't know, man. I, that's a toss-up on the defensive side. I think Winston, I think you give it to Winston on the offensive side because he really put together some drives. And he made some big-time throws, even though the receivers are the one catching it and getting yards after the catch. Landry had a good game, you know, but I still I still put it on Winston. Man, and to do it, he, obviously he was a little bit hurt, too. And mm-hmm. I hear anyone tell you, it looked like it was something in his back to me because his legs looked fine. It looked like he may have yeah. taken a shot and his back was a little tight. Um, mm-hmm. because it just it just didn't look you know there was a couple times where he seemed to be running stiffer, but not yeah. where his legs were dragging or anything like that. But mm-hmm. when it was time to let it go, he was letting it go. I it mean, was. there were a couple cross the body throws that he made in the pocket. That one to um to Jarvis Landry on the sideline, yo, that traveled yeah. and it moved quickly <laughs> too across the field. Yes. yes, like some of them back shows he threw to uh, Thomas in the end zone had some velocity on it. You know, so, I mean, I'm going to give it to Winston offensively. Defensively, it's a toss-up for me defensively. We'll be back later this week to do this again. Um, TC, any final comments before we get out of here? Uh, not at all, man. Just who that, man? Who that? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing better than a Monday after beating the Falcons. That's all there is to it, man. There's nothing better. <laughs> <laughs> so, for Terrence Copper, I am David Grubb. And this has been Believe It Saints brought to you by Bet Online. We'll talk to y'all again later this week.